Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or good day, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to the next episode of No Dice, No Glory. Sponsored by our jobs that actually pay us money, we're coming to you, not at all live, from an abandoned arms factory deep under a mountain in West Virginia. We are proud to proffer to you the finest in wargaming coverage. Without any further ado, let's get this show on the road. Welcome to Battle Vault, the American podcast focused on battlefront tactical games. I'm Ed, joined by my buddy Tom. Hey Ed, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Tom, why are we here? <laughs> yeah, so uh, <laughs> we're here because uh, we wanted to uh, provide something that doesn't exist in the uh, Flames of War Team Yankee community at the moment, and that is a, a U.S.-based monthly podcast that focuses on Flames of War, Team Yankee, Nam, Fate of a Nation, and uh, even uh, Great War. Yeah. Ed and I play all of these excessively. <laughs> we travel to uh, tournaments in the uh, local area. By the way, we're in Kentucky, and we play in Ohio and Indiana and Tennessee and, mm -hmm. and Illinois and even back east. We've gone to Virginia for an event or two. And I've gone and, down to South Carolina. Yeah, South things. Carolina. So we get out, we travel. We, we think we get out into the community and, and can come back and share our experiences with you. And, and mostly importantly, to help build some excitement for what's going on and talk about strategy and tactics and new things that are coming up. And just to uh, give something that I, I really want, which is a, a monthly podcast from here in the U.S. that tells us what's going on. And we hope that we can provide that for you. So our, our goal is to do this for a year, to do 12 podcasts over the next uh, uh, 11 months after this one. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we'll relook it and see what we're doing. And based off the feedback that we get from you all, and we'll tell you how to give us that feedback at the end of the episode. But we're interested if we're coming through that mission. And mm -hmm. to the extent that we are and you want us to continue, I think we will. But uh, if you want to tell us to pack it up and go home, we can do that too. So the ball's <laughs> in your court there, America. And uh, so we're going to start off tonight talking about uh, the 21st Panzer, uh, the new release that came out last month. Uh, Ed and I both are very excited about that. Both got the uh, the booklets and cards, and uh, both of us have 21st Panzer Forces, although only Ed has any of them done. Then we're going to transition later on to talk about the new British upcoming forces for Team Yankee World War Three. We're excited about that, and then we're going to cover events that are happening in the region and in any actually any events we know of. We'll talk about any, mm -hmm. any U.S. events and maybe even a couple overseas ones, and then we're also going to cover rules Ed forgot, <laughs> an all too common occurrence. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll help, to, which is another goal of this podcast to make Ed a better player. <laughs> so, in any case, we're glad you joined us this evening, and we hope that you uh, get something out of this and. Also, this is just going to be an hour podcast. We don't want to do anything excessive. Uh, you're probably already waning in intention level right now. So let's get into it, Ed, with the 21st Panzer. Can do. All right. First topic of discussion for this episode is the 21st Panzer, which uh, I believe was released uh, last month, right? We it's got it just great. before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And uh, Battle Buddy Ed here has been uh, a, pr a practitioner of the 21st Panzer for quite a while. So, Ed, why don't you tell us about your uh, experience and background with this formation? Well, I really like it. Uh, started putting together uh, a couple years ago, and was, when we went to version 4, it took a while before we finally got that uh, put out there. But last month, I was happy to see that Battlefront came up with it, and now I'm able to get my new pieces and make a complete force and actually play a couple scenarios. Yeah, it was great that they released it because uh, it wasn't in the initial books. A lot of people were concerned about it. There were people who had 21st Panzer Forces, like yourself. Mm -hmm. I actually had an unpainted 21st Panzer Force waiting in the in the wings. And uh, people just didn't have confidence that, that Battlefront was going to go and release an additional uh, ed expansion beyond the baseline books. So this was a good sign because uh, something came out in relatively short time. I mean, mm -hmm. within six months of the release of the D-Day German books, yeah. we already had a, a specific, ex unique expansion for it with complete army lists, complete army cards, and complete uh, special mm -hmm. command cards for it. Yeah. So it's pretty good. So you've already been playing it, right? I played it, I played it a couple times now, and I, I'm liking it. You know, when, you, when they came out with the D-Day book, you know, you think, well, the 21st goes naturally with it as a German force, and... So it's specialized for it, so here's a chance. Yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to do D-Day historically if you don't have the 21st Panzer. Because yeah. uh, it, it was the most forward Panzer division to mm -hmm. support the uh, Beachhead Defense mm -hmm. Divisions. It was the first one to be released to uh, counterattack. Right. Yeah. Well, it wasn't part of the uh, 
uh, Panzer Reserve. It right. was it was part of that initial that army group mm -hmm. right up on the beachhead. So, so yeah, it was definitely key, and it's also uh, a really interesting formation, right? Mm -hmm. It is. It is definitely different pieces of French uh, French constructed half tracks and all these mo uh, modifications to with the German equipment on French equipment. So it's it's odd looking. Uh, but it's it's fun to play with because it's odd. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the uh, French uh, what is it? S three hundred seven half tracks with a seventy three hundred sevens, three hundred fours. Yeah, the the, the, uh, the armored rocket launchers which we haven't got to yet. I'd like to see the Battlefront to update that when they do that. They but, do. but they have the multi multi uh, Reinhardt right. Should we get the right word uh, correct Rhine, on Rhine, it? Rhine metal. Yeah, Ryan Ryan Way Werfer. Right, Ryan and Werfer. Yeah, Werfer. Ryan and Werfer. Werfer. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have a beer and try to say that a couple yeah, times. Yeah, uh, fat uh, tire the beer for this evening. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the beer of the evening. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, so it's a big multi-tubed uh, mortar. Yeah. It's, it's like a bank of mortars that all fire simultaneously, so it gives the big template, mm -hmm. and so pretty cool. Yep. So uh, we we've played one game, mm -hmm. and uh, our, our, and I, I was using U.S. forces. Mm -hmm. Something I've been working on lately uh, is U.S. armor forces for D-Day, mm -hmm. and we did a hundred point game. And uh, so how how that uh, I mean tell us about your thoughts about putting together a force for that battle. Well, when I when I put together the force, I, I wanted to use as as much as of the stuff of, as I had already complete. And so um, what I came up with is I decided to go with the Panzer Grenadiers. So two full size Panzer Grenadiers, seven half tracks in each, uh, seven infantry teams in each, and um, I had the the the, the multi mortar section in there as well, a whole a full section of four. Um, and then I had uh, the the anti tank, uh, uh, what were they called? The seventy fives. These right here, the seventy fives Hoshkis assaults. Uh, I like those too. And I had a full, I had a full one of those. But they only come in uh, platoons of three, so I, I only had one of those. And and then I had I had a platoon of three for the seventy five anti tanks. And then I had a, a four platoon of the their version of the of the martyr, which was. Which was the uh, S three hundred seven uh, version, sort of like the the Martyr. That's the half track, right, with the seventy five on it. So I had a full section of four there. So that I had a uh, some anti aircraft, the uh, light anti aircraft uh, platoon there with the uh, ten fours in it, and uh, that was it. No, no, no I had the Schleppers. Schleppers and the I had the Schlepper one hundred fives. Yep. So we ended up playing uh, counterattack, and uh, I was definitely with a tank force choosing to attack. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Ed, uh, I chose I chose uh, maneuver. maneuver. Mm -hmm. Yep, and uh, and I wasn't I wasn't happy with that choice. No, no, <laughs> no. So I I basically ended up trying to instead of going to the far objective out there in no man's land, I I lined up to go right at your force. Yep. Uh, mostly because uh, Ed had to put a lot of his tanks in reserves. Mm -hmm. His uh, both of his uh, Hotchkiss Hot tank Hotchkiss units platoons. were in reserve, and one of his Panzer Grenadier platoons. So I want to stay since that only left the uh, 307 half tracks on the board for it. which was your ambush unit with mm -hmm. four 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 tracks and, and gun tubes on there. Mm -hmm. So I thought that I could overwhelm his forces pretty quickly and uh, before these reinforcements arrived. Mm -hmm. So uh, and it didn't quite work out as well as that. Yeah. Uh, it was still pretty stout defense. We used a lot of smoke. We in mm -hmm. the U.S. force I was running it was a U.S. tank company, but. Uh, I had uh, two batteries, a priest, and also the uh, mortars, the armored mortars. I got the use so of the first So a lot round. of smoke you played on yep. me. So I couldn't, you know, even if I had the forces out there, I couldn't see them. Yeah, all, all three smoke screens mm -hmm. were deployed during the battle. Mm -hmm. And so he wasn't really able to get any good shots until basically about turn three. Turn I used, three. used one on the first turn and two on the second turn. Mm -hmm. To, to shield my forces, and then we got into the close knife fight. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was kind of interesting fight. But let's—I uh, don't want to go run down the details. I guess the mm -hmm. the end result was a was a loss, right, for the uh, the Panzer Grenadiers of the Twenty First Panzer Division. The uh, was it or did we draw on that one? No, that two was a, games. that was a, that was a win for the Americans. Okay, that was eight one actually. <laughs> oh yes, I I forgot yes. about that. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about my memory later. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, it, well, it wasn't so much important. The, the result was. What was important was how did the force play and feel. Yeah. Well, I, I it was it was tough because of that smoke. That smoke was a particular thing. And even when I popped my ambush out, I popped it out at long range. Um, yeah, shooting through concealment. Yeah, yeah, and um, and so all eight shots, I got one hit, and it only ended up in a bale. So I wasn't too happy with that. 
Uh, I did knock it out the next turn because it didn't pop back up. Yeah, but, while, uh, while the Shermans were maneuvering it, your, the, the Stewarts that yeah. I were using went on kind of a, a flank diversion. Yep. And the, uh, the S-307s eventually whittled them down. Mm -hmm. uh, but it took a turn or two. And even then, mm -hmm. they, they didn't totally whittle them down because two were left that actually finished, finished off the so S-307s. So I, I, never, I never did clear, uh, no. kill it. No, so it was kind of a, mm -hmm. a tough test run for the uh, 21st Panzer because uh, they were denied, because that's what I'm going to do yeah. as an American player. I'm going to keep you from shooting at me until I get in close, and then I'm going to unload a lot of stabilizers at point blank range yep. as best I can. So that worked out pretty well for the U.S., but uh, in general, what have you chosen to defend? How would that have uh, gone different? If I defend, I still would have had the same things I had in reinforcement, and what I chose to do for the reinforcements was have the two Hotchkiss platoons yeah. for a total of 25 points there, and I chose one of my Panzer Grenadier platoons. So it was three units in, in reinforcement, but my problem is in the game that you and I played, my, my reinforcements still did not show up till turn three. Yeah, which is one of the key mm -hmm. things we talked about after the game was mm -hmm. that if you're going to play, and Ed has, and he has a second game he played too, mm -hmm. which was a, a closer game. It wasn't against me. It was against another one of our club members. But uh, if you're going to run 21st Panzer, you got to bring Von Luck. <laughs> yeah, that's, that know? was a thing. So if I brought Von Luck and I brought the Panzer 4s, uh, that would take a good chunk of points there, and especially if I brought the the ten point von Luck card. So, if you know, so it would yeah, it would have taken out. That's a another tank too. It is. It is. So, um, that be what's it? Twenty eight points plus von Luck thirty eight points, which is almost the the amount yeah. that for the uh, you get an upgrade for your tank commander, like the reroll misses or something, and then mm -hmm. it finishes off the rest of yeah. the points. Or you can reroll your your. If Von Lux with the reinforcement team, it gets to re-roll for coming back in as reinforcements. Yeah. If, yeah. One dice. One dice, yeah. One dice out of the reserve roll. So I, I like the card plus, a lot. Plus he's another formation commander for you. Mm -hmm. he, can, he can help motivate units that are around him. So mm -hmm. A lot of advantages to that. Point-wise, yeah, but you know what? It might In that game, I know, it would have made a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. And so I might consider that this next time. Yeah, Von Luck mm -hmm. roll, rolling in on turn one with uh, five Panzer fours in tow in his own. That's six Panzer fours yeah. coming, up on, more coming up on the rear. Yes. Watch out, Stewart. Uh, there you go. Comes in quicker, <laughs> hits harder, uh, can defend better. Because uh, one of the drawbacks of the 21st Panzer is it's, it's thin skin. There's thin nothing. Skin. What is the best armor you get? Well, like, one what? armor, except for my Hotchkiss uh, 105s, which have a two. What about the, the uh, 75s? You know, I don't know. No one's ever shot at me with those yet. Yeah, so, I have. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. They, they, they came out of reserves. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, so tell us about the second game. I wasn't there. I had to depart. And you second played against, game. Uh, Steve? Was it Steve? It was it? Steve Payne. Yeah. And Steve Payne had a... Oh, was it Steve Payne? Yes, it was Steve Payne. Yeah, it was Steve Payne. Yeah. So a, a theme you're going to find here in uh, on Battle Vault is that uh, Ed can't remember anything. <laughs> so and matter make, of fact, we're going to come we'll, up with we'll, this we'll segment come back that, to that, later that on. just covers that stuff. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. Let's see. What did he have? He had. Uh, no, I don't think I played that with him. I think he had the the Tiger Force, didn't he? Yes. Uh, yeah, he I had played some a, tigers. He he had yeah he had, he had the tigers and he had the half tracks grenadiers, and then I played the British, and that's something else I'd like to talk about too. All right, well, we can't do. It. Okay, on the second game, uh, again playing Richard Booth, but the the game was dust up, and his forces he had an armor unit, and, uh, armor formation, and a, and a airborne formation. And he started the game with the armor formation on the board in a great defensive position on the far side of the board. Uh, M10's in a, in a good spot for a long-range uh, defensive fire. Uh, he had his uh, headquarters uh, Shermans behind the woods, so couldn't see him, uh, but able to react to whatever I decided to do. And the same thing with his uh, uh, Sherman platoon. And again, they were trained, uh, but there were plenty of them. And so he had good uh, potential for reaction and movement. His recon jeeps were out there. And so he had first move, and uh, he went scooting around with his jeeps to get on the same side as his reinforcements would have come on, in on. And, but he, but he, but he moved far enough to where my observer could see him. Uh, bad, bad choice on that one. So I, I ended up shooting my 105s on my turn at them, and I knocked out one of the jeeps right away. And then my multi, multi uh, mortars uh, hit his uh, 57 millimeter anti-tank guns, which were set up in the tree line. 
Uh, and so uh, they hammered them the whole game, but I, I only killed one yeah. of his 57s the well, that's whole they were, game. They're paratrooper 57s. Uh, yes. One, one thing, uh, as good as artillery is with repeat bombardments and mm-hmm. killing stuff, Veterans are sometimes just hard to kill, yeah. uh, especially if you only have a four plus firepower. Which yeah. the and that's exactly do. what so the problem was. They, they only hit them uh, half the time, mm-hmm. and they they save still mm-hmm. on average because it's you know even that the reroll save is still a three plus. And, and even then, when I did hit them, a four then, plus then half got, the time, I, I yeah, but my bite was I was pretty consistent that game fire, on, on fire not rolling you down. Yep, yeah, indeed. but then that's exactly what happened. Yeah. And so we, we played that. You know, we were we were. I was so as he he was just going to stand back there and wait for me. So I decided, okay, I'm going to come around the south side of the board there and try to to flank him and hit the area that I had at least a little cover to to jut out for. Yeah, I, I came over later, mm-hmm. um, came back and why I, I wasn't playing this game, but uh, I went home and got some stuff to spray paint and went over and worked on that and then came over and checked out the game and. And I saw that you had uh, your uh, S-307s on a kind of a central hill mm-hmm. where they could shoot either, you know, down a slot between uh, some trees and mm-hmm. where his armor was coming up and then over to the area where the reserves came up. So and it didn't look like he was pushing too aggressively on you. He definitely wasn't using smoke to get in close. Right, right. He didn't He didn't use the smoke. He, and so uh, I was able to go there and I was going to push that one side, but I was kind of hoping, you know, surely my reserves would come in, but they did not. Yep. And then, and, and, and then his Von did. Lock. Yeah, Von Lock. I know that was just the the point it hammered on once again, and so his his reserves came in quite quite quick. So his shirt is uh, his stewards showed up, uh, and so now my 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 S three hundred sevens were out of position, so I had to I had to turn them back around, and uh, I only only bailed one, uh, with the, that first round that I shot at him. But uh, I eventually killed three over a couple of turns. But I never, I never did kill yeah. his, his platoon there. Yeah, and you eventually just kind of ran out of time. Yeah, we you? ran out of time. Even so, when his paratroopers came rushing in, that was he. He had no which, place to hide my artillery handle. Which, which is kind of a one of the drawbacks mm-hmm. of the uh, Panzer Grenadier with light armor. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to go on the offensive. Yeah. Uh, and particularly against armor forces. So, so now that you played a couple of games of version four with the twenty first Panzer. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think? I mean, is this a force you're going to continue to uh, push for, mm-hmm. or are you going to play it competitively? Well, I've been I've been lucky with the German Grenadiers in the past, so I'm going to keep on giving this a shot, see how it goes. And after those past two games, I'm going to relook my potential force and, and think about getting uh, getting that luck in there. Yeah, either either on foot or or on that Panzer four. So yeah, I, I really think he needs to come on board with Panzer force. Mm-hmm. I think that's just you need an assault unit, and and those those armored French. Guns are just not assault units, yeah. and they're slow. Yeah, oh yeah, the yeah. speeds. I noticed in our game mm-hmm. uh, when your Panzer Grenadier platoon came in from reserves on those French half tracks, it's just charging like, at a speed of eight. <laughs> yeah, it's like they're never going to make it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have this game won before they're even close to the objective that I'm pushing on. <laughs> so I'd just rather have my infantry running beside them. You know, there so, you go. Yeah, what you gotta you gotta think. Uh, Battlefront mm-hmm. had to be careful with this mm-hmm. because uh, the miniatures were only going to be available through direct order, mm-hmm. and if they made this list too good, mm-hmm. they would get all sorts of grief from the community. Yeah, I think for, so. For going and, and making a, a a list that you mm-hmm. kind of almost have to buy, but you have to direct order and you can't get it through your local mm-hmm. stores. So they, I think they had to be very very moderate in how they try to balance this thing out. It's, yeah. it's a fair. I think things are properly pointed. I do too. They, I, those were the disadvantages of the yeah. vehicle. So, they, they, the data that goes with them is very good and, and yeah. exactly how it would, and it plays out that way. Yeah, but the, the list has definitely got some potential mm-hmm. because uh, if you go with the Panzer Grenadier version, number one, you don't have to take everybody in half tracks, something you can That's consider right. doing. Mm-hmm. Then you get the S 307s, but then you can also take a platoon of martyrs, right? That's right. From the German support options. That's and, right. And then you could use S-307 half tracks for those if you wanted to, or yeah. throw in some more of the, uh, the the Hotchkisses with the 75 millimeter Pac 40s, whatever you want to do. So you can get a lot of guns in there, but there's some other disadvantages with the uh, 21st Panzer Grenadiers, right? Yeah. It's composed of the normal Panzer Grenadiers. And that's the, the, the numbers for the support the support 21st, like the Hotchkisses, the, yeah. the, the 75s, because it only comes in platoon of three. So, you know, you take out one, and then the other one gets bailed. You're, yeah. you're well, checking. Yeah, small small units of thin mm-hmm. armor. So you're going to have to maximize the use of cover. 
You're going to have to, so you, which means you can't push them out in the open, which means you can't go and, and pressure mm -hmm. anybody. You have mm -hmm. to kind of sit back and be defensive with them. Yeah. But you can get a lot of tubes in there. But the Panzer Grenadiers, uh, they're different from the normal Panzer Grenadiers, right? Because uh, they have uh, less options for adding additional, like, anti-tank weapons. Oh. I mean, you get the Panzer Faust for the, the, the floating Panzer Faust. Right, and then you got the 37 you can put on one of your half tracks. And that's it. And that is it. Yeah, yeah. there's no Panzer Shreks. There's no Panzer Shreks in those platoons. That is right. correct. That's, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a, that's that's a big, a big deal. Yeah. yeah, and the um, half tracks not being that much faster, but they still give you something to move forward. They mm -hmm. all, and you, it is one team well, per transport now. So you can get quite a few. Yeah, you're paying a couple points extra to get all the extras, but that's three three more out there and uh good you know good uh good uh machine gun support if you need it so yeah plenty of machine guns you run in infantry you're all you're, you're doing pretty good yeah and you can also take uh additional if you're taking the panzer Grenadier version mm -hmm. the 75 millimeter uh hotchkiss tank units and the 105s and mm -hmm. that's one thing i noticed about the list that you played the, this past weekend was that you had schleppers and you had the 105s and you had the multi mortars. So yep. you had three template units, mm -hmm. which is just overkill, particularly when you're facing tank opponents all day long. <laughs> <Yeah. You know? laughs> and when I'm facing paratroopers, they're not dying when I hit them. Well, his, his paratroopers' riches were in reserve, so yeah. I don't even well, know. Well, the, the anti tank guns yeah, right. kept yeah. me from running over there. Yeah. You know, fifty. You know, six pounders are are way overkill for my half tracks, and yeah. that's what I had. It, so sure, it, take the uh, mm -hmm. continue to take the. Uh, I mean, maybe dismount one of the platoons. Yeah. D drop either the schleppers or the one hundred five uh, Hotchkiss tanks, mm -hmm. one or the other. You don't need them both. Yeah. And then uh, maybe um, look at getting in von Luck and some Panzer fours to mm -hmm. make a really solid more reliable reserve unit right. and plus the, if you're attacking man it's just a good it's good force and it gives you another formation mm -hmm. commander just so yeah. many positives from that yeah they need to attack i need to have everything on the board so you've got a tournament coming up uh in a couple weeks yeah uh, we're, two we're, weekends. yeah we're looking at going to that indianapolis uh Indi uh, at, the, at the end of the month indy storm a new convention In indy storm so you're going to run the 21st panel i am i'm going to i'm going to play it and I still haven't decided on the Panzer IVs yet. So yeah, so I, I've got a 21st Panzer IV that's totally new in the box, not even opened. <laughs> and so I'm still debating to see if I'm going to open it up and well, paint it. Well, don't make that judgment based on my playing yeah. of them. No, I mean, but the, the 21st <laughs> Panzer, it's 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 if you're an experienced player, it has the tools mm -hmm. to do well with, mm -hmm. but it's just nothing that's going to be dominating. It's not a must-have. It's not an easy button. It's not. It's not. not. You got to know how to play them. Yeah. You, you're gonna have to use terrain. You got to be skilled to play them. And you're gonna need some luck. And I need luck. <laughs> yeah, it's some von luck. Von luck. <laughs> you're gonna need it. You're gonna need it to get get through good games. Like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So that's uh, definitely uh, it's it's a niche list. You know, it's one that provides a unique equipment that's fun that has a lot of character. But uh, mm -hmm. it's not going to be dominating tournaments, tur tournaments, mm -hmm. uh, unless they're just played by ace players. And ace players won't migrate it to it because it doesn't have enough extra freebie bonuses or, mm -hmm. or, or meta kind of changing things to it. Right. Uh, at least, at least not yet. I mean, there may be someone out there that scheming can... about it. It's going to break the code and show us how it's all done. But yeah. right now, I think it's just a fun I, list to play and yeah, a great. I think wins will be a six three if if it happens. Oh sure, yeah, you're gonna so... you're gonna bleed points with those yeah, thin playing. armor, small thin armor platoons, yeah. certainly. So good deal. All right, well, anything else you want to say about the twenty first Panzer? I like them. Okay. I want to play them. Gonna gonna add to your collection. I am. All right, you're gonna make me paint mine. I'm going to make you pay it. <laughs> yeah, then yeah. you can run your Americans. Okay. Yeah, so I can do my Americans <laughs> or my British. All right. All right, Tom, uh, they just came out with the update for the British uh, book for Team Yankee. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the new stuff that they got in there? Yeah, so this is replacing Iron Maiden. Uh, it's now Team Yankee World War III, and the uh, British book is going to add to the uh, British arsenal the, the Challenger uh, most uh, uh, prominently. Also, the infantry is going to get a boost with an option for the Warriors. They're going to bring in the Fox Armored Car, and they're also adding in the MRLS, the Multiple Rocket Launcher System. Oh, yeah, I know that so, one. So uh, some, some pretty good options for uh, British players. Now, uh, Ed and I, we we play uh, Team Yankee as well. Of course, we play all things Battlefront Tactical. Yeah, <laughs> but, absolutely. Uh, but uh, we're much more limited. We both have huge amount of forces for Flames of World, World War II. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, when it comes to the Team Yankee, I only play Soviets. And Ed? I only play West Germans. Yeah, so so our experience uh, with the British is mostly looking at them across the table. And specifically one of our local friends, Charles Christie, he plays Brits a lot. And, and I have played one game against this new list already. So I'll be able to talk about that slightly. Yeah. I, so. I like the British. I think their stuff looks really cool. And I'd really like to get that army just because of that reason. I've yeah. never seen them for real, but the models look really good. No, there, there's definitely a, a cool factor to the British Army of the Rhine. Mm -hmm. And also one thing that I really like that they did in this new expansion book is that uh, they touched on Desert Storm. Yeah. They have a little chapter about the British uh, 7th Division mm -hmm. in, uh, de in uh, or was it 7th Brigade? His first, uh, uh, I think I want to yeah. say 7th Brigade, Tom. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, uh, but the, the forces that fought in uh, Desert Storm, I think the uh, Royal... The Scots Greys, the uh, Dragoon Guards were, yep. were one of them, and they were one of the Challenger units and a bunch of other ones. So, pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, I, I'll start. I'll kick us off. Okay. I'll uh, I'll talk about the the new new tank on the battlefield, the Challenger. So, uh, big significant plus up from the Chieftain, but of course that comes with additional price cost. Mm -hmm. So the Challenger is a much more modern tank. It has thermal sights, the Cobham armor. Uh, Still has stabilizers and range finders. Still has the L11 gun, which is a great gun with 40-inch range and AT22. So that's all the same. But what really gets a big boost is the armor. The baseline Challenger has a front armor of 20, side armor of 8, and top armor of 2. That's pretty darn significant. And then if you want to spend the roughly additional uh, 2 points per tank, you can upgrade them to a, a ROMAR, R-O-M-O-R, I guess it's an acronym. Yeah. But uh, basically it's uh, reactive armor platelets that go along the sides and the front. And the uh, kit that Battlefront's providing apparently has the parts so you can build a straight up Challenger or the up armored one. So it's a pretty, pretty hefty increase, but what it does is it gives you a, a front armor of 21, a side armor of 10, and a top armor of 2. And remember because it has the Chobum armor, it already has a side armor of 16 versus heat weapons. So pretty pretty stout vehicle. This is a, a tank that is impervious to your uh, Milans, your AT-21 stuff, the, mm -hmm. the Spandrel missile. These things just are not going to be able to even dent this tank. Even uh, at long, even at rain, even uh, the unarmored version, it can only bail them from the front. Mm -hmm. That's it, because the lowest they can get is a, as a result is a 1 add that the front armor 21 and guess what you just now tied the uh the missiles yeah so pretty pretty awesome uh, system but uh it's going to be limited you know if you're playing a 100 point game and you're going to be running three challengers that's 39 with romar that's 39 <laughs> points right there <laughs> i and, hope uh, we're playing over a 100 point game uh, yeah tell you. yeah well uh, i noticed a lot of the recent events the points are going like up, 120 I think, like 120 yeah so. i saw that uh, I guess there's some more encouraging to get tanks out there. And I, I think mm -hmm. the new rules in Team Yankee 3 have made the game a bit more tank-friendly anyways. But uh, this guy is going to be a brute. So uh, I already had a chance to play against Charles Christie, our, mm -hmm. our good friend with this, uh, who, who's got British. And he used these. But uh, How did you fare, Tom? Oh, well, I... The, the, you were playing Russians. Yeah, I was playing my mm -hmm. normal straight-up Soviets, uh, motorized rifle battalion supported by one company of T-72s. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, we ended up playing Counterattack, uh, coincidentally the same mission that you and I last right. played mm -hmm. uh, in a World War II game. And his challengers, because they're extreme cost, basically had to be one of his, his reserve unit, almost mm -hmm. his whole reserve unit. Mm -hmm. uh, he had that and some you know pointless anti-aircraft systems because I had no air for him to shoot at. So uh, th I knew these things were going to come in behind me on my left flank, and I spearheaded out and, and, and tried to uh, go, <laughs> go over that way. I knew where they are going to be coming, and I knew they'd have the first shots, but if uh, one, little, one little weak spot in the Challenger, you know what it is? Range? No, 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 not range. It's the rate of fire. Rate of fire. So the the Leopard and the M1, they have rate of fire too on the move. So they're pretty scary mm -hmm. uh, when they're when they're moving. The Challenger, not so much. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a rate of fire one uh, on, on the move. The move. Uh, stationary, it's two. I wonder why they gave them the rate of fire one. Well, the uh, Challenger had two piece ammo. Uh, it was. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it has a, a warhead and then a powder charge. They're separate, so mm -hmm. uh, I imagine that's part of the factor. I, I, by the way, had a chance to uh, climb into some Challengers and the, cool. with the Jordanian Army, ninety <laughs> first Royal Jordanian Armor Brigade. They were uh, running around with Challengers. So, anyways, uh, I didn't get to drive them or shoot them, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But, anyways, so back to the tank itself. 
Yeah, that rate of fire. So I knew that with that limited rate of fire, having uh, three of these challengers coming on the board right behind my T-72s wasn't going to be a big deal because I was at most going to lose three T-72s. Right. Well, I had nine of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just uh, I just sat there and waited for him uh, for his... Uh, ch I made sure I was just close enough so that wherever he came in out of reserves, the T-72s would be able to maneuver on his flank. Right. And also had some overwatch of some storms. So... Any case, the Challenger sh showed up and beat up a bunch of T-72s, and the T-72s came around and got them on the flanks, and that was pretty much the end of that. Oh. So so kind of a dulcetory result for uh, the Challenger's first big appearance in our game. And but they was, look good coming on. Yeah, yeah. he he, had, he has the models uh, from uh, a different different company uh, that he already had, some resin oh, really? Challengers. Yeah, really nice models. So I'm looking forward to seeing the Battlefront plastics for these. But, yeah, so it was kind of anticlimactic because it was a big, big, the way they were coming Here in. they come, but it, that's it? Yeah, okay. Uh, well, and that's what you're going to have to do against the Challenger. Yeah. Uh, you're, not, you're just going to have to swarm it and get on its flanks. Mm -hmm. So... A pair of upgun challengers in a defensive position sitting behind a, a, a decent line of British infantry, pretty decent proposition. Yeah. But on the attack, they're going to have to expose their flanks by coming forward, and as particularly if there's reserves. There's their weakness. So, so, so they're, they still have the standard thing, and pretty much any, any tank can kill any other tank on the flank. I mean, you can even get in there with a T-55 and kill this thing on the flank. Mm -hmm. So. Not 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 undoable. So uh, another big upgrade they had was the war. So yeah, why don't so, you tell us about the war? Yeah, right? that challenger could have these warriors right beside it to protect it. This they would be good. Yeah, the warrior. It's a uh, it's a Bradley equivalent for the Americans. It's a little uh, less in uh, exposure, a little less height uh, in real world. But hey, uh, looks really good. Um, in this case, the the transport itself, you get the base transport. It only has a three front, uh, two side, and one top armor. And they seem to be very slow. I'm looking at a tactical speed here of a six, train dash, 18, cross country 28, and a road of 36. But it's armed with this uh, 30 millimeter Rarden gun. Yeah, Rarden. <laughs> no beer before this again. Okay. Only a little bit of beer. Rarden, <laughs> Rarden gun. It has a range of 24 and an AT of 10, uh, firepower of 5. Uh, but it has the anti-helicopter capability on this thing. And, and they, the, the, the rule they got for these guys is a sneak and peek. So it allows them to go a little bit faster on the move, uh, but they will not fire. It's like 10 inches. Yeah, so it must mm -hmm. be a lack of stabilization or something then. Yeah, it must that. be. Yeah, so they can move 10 inches mm -hmm. if they don't shoot, basically. Tactically. That's right. And then that's they right. shoot, they're only going. So, that yeah, that's, a, mm -hmm. that's an issue with stabilizers. But this would be good flank protection for your challengers. And they also gave you the ability to upgrade it. Uh, to up armor it and by up armor it you not only uh, get an extra armor uh, where it goes to a 5-3-1 uh, you also get the ability to have a melange uh, launch from it as well yeah so, but that's uh that Milan edition that's that is a passenger fire passenger Milan, right? only yes it's got to have the passenger on it yeah which uh the the bradley when it shows up will have a totally independent tow launcher that's right yeah but it still has that capability for a couple extra points and so uh, I think they, they're really cool. I just wish they were a little faster. Uh, but, hey, with the Challenger and these, a slow sweep across the board, uh, I think could do quite well. Yeah, I'm thinking the Brits still seem to me like a very defensive formation. Yeah. Yeah, and they're, they're uh, warriors. They're uh, 14 points for a full platoon, and mm -hmm. you'll, you'll get four of the baseline warriors with the uh, GPMG machine gun teams for those. Also, uh, they have the 66 anti-tank weapon systems on there, three Carl Gustavs, and the two-inch mortar. So pretty decent uh, unit, uh, general purpose unit, if you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's it cost to upgrade to the up-armor there, Ed? Oh, I don't know. It's not. It's right there. It says one point. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Sorry, one point. Things yeah. Ed can't even see. Yeah, yeah, that's a new. Yeah. That's a new topic. Yeah. So like uh, it's right in front of me. There it is. So one that point. that's a pretty good. Uh, but then it also gives you applique armor. So now you get the better straight up stats, the mm -hmm. five front armor, which is important because now it's impervious to BRDMs and some of the other yeah. light lighter weapon systems on the board. But uh, what does the applique armor do for you? Applique them? armor teams that are that have this armor have a front and side armor of a thirteen against heat weapons. So a great, uh, great upgrade, especially protection against those uh, RPGs by the roving infantry. So yeah, uh, very survivable now. Right. So uh, being a Soviet player again, one of the biggest things I'll do is I'm not too too impressed with BF 432s. Yeah. Because I just advance with a whole big sweeping 
company of, of mechanized or correction motorized infantry mm -hmm. and there's rpg 7s there's rpg 17s and uh, they'll they'll chew through those pretty easily mm -hmm. but uh but with this armor armor 13, it's going to make a big difference there's a chance yeah. it gives them a, a chance to save where before yeah. there, there was, was no. there was no save that's right so how do these prepare compare with the vf 432 formations that they had uh and cost uh, so basically it brings up the cost from the baseline British mechanized platoon was seven points and now the new one is 14 points so that that's double the cost to get those those basically mm -hmm. just the 30 millimeter Rard guns in there yeah and then even more if you want to add that Milan launcher and the uh, the applique armor and the and the beefed up stats mm -hmm. so it's uh it's pretty pricey yeah. For an uh, armored personnel carrier, I mean, you can get a lot of BMPs for <laughs> at the, this cost. But the big difference between an APC and an and a IFV is the fact this is an infantry fighting vehicle. Yeah, and so that yeah. uh, 30 millimeter gun will be good for helping to destroy the BMPs. BMP swarm. That's so, right. And, and anything else that's light armor that you bring this way. Yeah, whereas that's before, more than enough. When, when I go against the VF-432 mech infantry, I have absolutely no concern about the vehicles. Right. I'm Machine just, gun, so what? Yeah, the BMP twos and the BMP ones mm -hmm. just just tear them up. No, yeah. no issue. So this does uh, this does induce a bit of caution, but you're you're going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So pretty pretty awesome thing. So the uh, multiple rocket launcher system is another. another oh thing yeah, we're adding. and I do like those. Yeah, why why do you like those, Ed? Well, <laughs> why? Because I got to see them really fire, and those things are beautiful. Yeah, I, I, I and in the in the British version of their their theirs is a little different than the, the Americans. I, I just think it looks really cool. Yeah. The thing with the uh, MLRS, uh, each MLRS rocket launcher counts as two weapon systems when they're firing. So uh, you got a couple of them out there, but I tell you what, they they can put the the lead down range, and it's whatever it hits, it's going to tear something up. Yeah, and they use the large template. Yes. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, also have the minefield capability. That's correct. The MLRS uh, capability. Pretty cool. And yeah, fast cam type weapon system that we have for our artillery. Yeah. Now the uh, not going to be too good against tanks though, right? Uh, AT three. Uh, I, I believe it is AT three. Yeah, and then firepower five plus. Five so plus. Yeah. Not particularly pre impressive, and also not very impressive for digging out infantry. I mean, it's sad. Five, five, I don't understand five plus, that. Uh, five plus firepower. So you get a great big mm -hmm. dispersionary. Now, now when they fire smoke, do they even have that. No, they don't have that capability. They don't. They don't have that. So yeah, that's. Uh, I I'm just, I guess the ability to deploy minefields is nice, mm -hmm. and having a big template. It's worth the extra one point for the MLRS capability for those minefields. Uh, that's good. Throw that out there early. You're going to need that, and then after that, you know, use this to. If they dismount, you need to throw that stuff out there. Yeah. So another another nice thing about them, I think, though, is that uh, you can get a pair of them for six points, mm -hmm. and because they count as two, two. Uh, Two, two, systems. two vehicles each. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You're not so not re-rolling with that. So right. for for six points, you can get a pretty big template out there. But uh, I just I just don't like not having a smoke template. I've got to have smoke. Yeah, got, got yeah. With smoke. with uh, MRS, you're not going to get the smoke. You're going to have to go to the 109s or the uh, the Abbots that the British have, which are really cool. The Abbots are the, the for those that don't know the smaller 105 version on their on their light uh, light vehicle. And yep. then you got the the common M109, which I love myself. Yeah, yeah. Having been on the one of those myself. Yeah, and they also have mortars too, right? You can get with the British some. The British uh, have the two inch mortar support and the, the uh, yeah. vehicle mounted mortars. So oh, uh, yes, they do. Mm -hmm. The other big addition that the Brits are getting with this is, and these are also going to be available in in uh, plastic, are the uh, Fox reconnaissance vehicles. Really cool. Yeah, they're uh, so the three points to get four of them, and of course, not much for armor as you expect. Uh, two two on the front and one on the side, zero on the top. Mm -hmm. uh, not really that fast either. Only got a, a, a tactical cross country speed of six, so they're they're kind of slow as well. Do they have that? Uh, they that, do have the sneak and peek capability. They do. They have yeah, that too. They do. Uh -huh. And they're also scouts and spearhead. They're typical reconnaissance mm -hmm. vehicles. And they got that thirty millimeter gun that I like. Yeah. Well, that's mm -hmm. the big key. So yeah. four of those thirty millimeter guns for three points. So mm -hmm. this is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that the Warriors, as cool mm -hmm. as they are with the new hotness, I think you take the VF-432s and then you pick up a platoon of Foxes to support them. 
Yeah, that's, well, that, that's a cheaper yeah. way to get that gun into the mix. Well, the, the the Fox has the scout capability too. Also has spearhead. Yeah, yeah, it gets you a lot of advantages that way. Yeah, and for three points for four of these things, I know. I think that's that's pretty not good bad thing. at all. That that will offset your cost for your for your challengers that cost so much money. So. Do, yeah. we, do we see anything game changing with the Brits? Do you think they're going to shift the meta I, for I, for tournament gaming with the uh, Team Yankee? I don't think so, really. Again, you noticed it also. They're a defensive type unit, uh, and they need to play that way. I think just because, uh, as we noticed with the rate of fire for the challenge itself, and uh, they've got to be teamed up with infantry or some kind of protection for yeah. flank security. Otherwise, yeah, I'm, they're going to be a slow progress. Yeah, they can take it on, but it. It's not going to be a charge into battle thing. No. This is a well. The a Brits, slow... Brits really haven't been. Yeah, they've been. They've been the uh, well. The Milans have been sitting back with yeah, the Milans right. and killing everybody. They're, they're, they're the chief propagators of of a Milan spl- yeah. sp- <laughs> <laughs> spam. So uh, now they're pretty watch cool. the Milans. Now, so I, I've been playing a lot of British, mm-hmm. uh, mostly with the, against Charles, but also in tournaments too. So I'm, yeah, I've, I've seen them play. I like I like what they mm-hmm. uh, they add. I think it's cool for the options, but. They're expensive. They're expensive. The, the but they look cool. Yeah, but the but they're 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 probably not optimum. I think the yeah. Brits. I don't know that you know, these are things you must do to be successful. The British. I think there's some cool things if you want to put some extra points into. Mm-hmm. But uh, other than the fox, I think the fox is the is the the bargain of yeah. the bunch. That's the thing that for for just for a few ju- points you get just a three lot of... points to get four of those hulls mm-hmm. and four of those Rardin guns yeah. tearing away BMPs and doing some damage just spearhead and scout uh, yeah. capabilities those survivable yeah. they just have that and crappy give you an advantage. they just have that crappy tactical speed that's the sad part <laughs> yeah so so anyways uh, i guess that's it for uh, mm-hmm. taking a good look at the british and uh, so uh, i think i I'd, I'd definitely get this one if i expand and I'm, I'm planning on expanding my team yankee force this is i'm seriously looking at this one. well you can use brits as allies for your west germans you can you know of course mm-hmm. so there you go okay well let's uh wrap up here with the brits okay so let's get into rules that ed forgot <laughs> or did. possibly never knew <laughs> so ed uh what did we learn in our last game okay now I, my short-term memory i do remember because it was such a big deal I was playing my Panzer Faust Limited uh, one special rule for my Grenadiers incorrectly, and I've been doing it incorrectly for some time now. Because the way I thought it was, when we went to the shoot, that I had to pick one stand to have the Faust. And if that that particular stand died in the process, then I was out for a Faust still the, the thing. Tom pointed it out that I was wrong. I didn't believe him either. <laughs> Until he actually showed it to me and, and reread it to me, I guess I don't know what I did wrong. Here. Yeah, but, so this is not uncommon, and yeah, this, is, so this is this is why uh, what you really have to do when it comes to the rules is mm-hmm. you just have to slow down and read them carefully. Mm-hmm. If you read it carefully, it usually will tell you exactly what it is that you have to do. <laughs> so here, here's the actual rule: Panzerfaust Limited One. Each time a unit. Uh, shoots one of his teams may shoot as a Panzerfaust rather than using his usual weapon. Of course, it'd be an infantry team. Mm-hmm. And then in close assault, each time this unit rolls to hit an assault, one of his teams may attack with Panzerfaust rather than its usual weapon. So it can be any team. And so this is not a, and, and Ed's not alone in this. Uh, I've seen other players do this where they think that it's the assault phase and it's the same team for the entire assault phase that has the Panzer And that's files. the way I've been playing. Yeah, and that is not the case. Every time you go to roll the dice to hit, you can decide for whatever next round of assault, next round after mm-hmm. assault, or counterattack, and et cetera. Anytime you roll the dice, you can decide which of those teams has a Panzer file. So it's absolutely unkillable until the unit is destroyed completely. And, uh, this and, is making me like my Grenadiers a lot better now. Yeah, it gives them a little more flexibility. Yeah. It lets them float around. And also, it's kind of interesting, too, because if you, let's say you do something, you, oh, and it's there for multiple assaults. So That's right. if you get it two, one unit comes and assaults you and another one does, there it is again. Mm-hmm. Even if who was using the Panzerfaust in the previous assault had, had, had been destroyed. But think about your headquarters. Right, your your XO and your two IC. This is what happened in our game. Well, they're often they're often spread apart. So even yeah. though they're on opposite end of the boards, mm-hmm. one could one being assaulted in one area could be using the Panzerfaust, mm-hmm. and then on the, the next unit that assaults on the other side, mm-hmm. that Panzerfaust can be over there for the next one. So it just it doesn't. It's basically the idea is that all units have 
all of the teams have uh, a certain number of Panzer Fouls floating around, mm-hmm. and they just grab one. And so yeah. just to keep it yep. controlled, that's one each time it happens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Not hopefully just one, uh, one team. Hopefully Ed will remember this in the future. Oh, I'll remember it now. <laughs> I, don't, he's, I mean, he's all pro- those times, I'm thinking, God, I could have probably yeah. taken the game instead he, he, of it. Yeah, you're you're primarily a German player, so you've really just been screwing yourself on well, this you, one. Well, either playing it, German or Russians, usually. Yeah. And the, the funny part, though, is when I try to point out, you you argue with me. No, no, that's not how it works. I'm like, dude, <laughs> trying to help you out here. All right. So, uh, any case, uh, so before we wrap up, we want to talk about what's coming up in the near future, and I'll kick that off with the uh, the next events, and we and we're we're going off the Battlefront webpage and the Nationals. Uh, today is January 23rd, and so this weekend, and by the time you hear this, undoubtedly this will be passed, but the uh, West Coast Nationals are being played right now out in Las Vegas. Uh, they start tomorrow, so that, that will be OBE by the time you hear this podcast. So the next one that's coming up that we know of is uh, Indy Storm, uh, weekend after next, so February 1st and 2nd in Indianapolis, Indiana. This is a new convention, and our good buddies of Able Company, uh, who we game with quite a bit, they're they're hosting this thing, and they're running two events on Saturday. They're doing Flames of War, eighty-eight points, late war. Uh, that's an open open format, and then on Sunday they're doing Team Yankee at ninety-six points. And uh, right now, uh, Ed and I uh, we're trying to we're trying to debate whether we're going to go up there for the whole weekend or just go up there for Saturday and come back because uh, obviously if uh, if it ends on a Sunday and we got to go to work the next day yeah. and then drive back, the so we're we're, we're kind of wishy washy on the Team Yankee as much as we'd love to do it, plus the mm-hmm. cost of a hotel stay, right. but, uh, Saturday at least for that. So after that, uh, that's the only event we know of in February. But yeah. then we roll into March, and man, in March are we packed with March events. is busy. Uh, we're going to start that out with Sensicon, which is going to be on the sixth and seventh of March. Uh, on the 6th of March, there's going to be a Team Yankee Escalation Tournament, uh, 70, 90, and 120 points. And then, um, let's see, they also have a, on the same day, a Flames of War Mid-War at 90 points. Uh, let's see, on Saturday, on the 7th, we've got, uh, let's see, we've got a Great War Tournament of 100 points. Uh, I have not played in a hundred in, in a Great War tournament yet. Tom and I have nor, played. Nor have you played with your own s- s- uh, <laughs> miniatures. I know. I know. I've been used to Tom's a whole yeah, time. Yeah, I've got uh, British and German, so yeah. he, he borrows my Great War stuff when we play. But I bought the French, I know you got the and French they're coming. almost done, and they're and they're looking really good right now because I got all the armor, I got a lot of it, and I got a lot of infantry. So I'm looking forward to playing that. But I don't think I'll have it ready by that time. But I'm going to try. Okay. Um, we'll look at that. But I really want to play the uh, 100 point Flames of War Late War because that's where I'm going to play my, my 21st Division. So on, mm-hmm. it's two, two days. Two days. And there's two tournaments on each day. That's so, correct. So there's four tournaments going on at Sensicon, which is Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah. And, and the question is, which, one, which ones are, am, I, am I not going to play? Yeah. And so no, right I'm, now I'm, I'm favoring the, uh, the Flames of War ones. But a lot of options there. Flames of War and Team Yankee or Flames of War and and Great War? I don't know if I have 120 points of Germans. That's my thing. I've got plenty of... 120 uh, for Great War? It's 100 points for Great War. 100 points for Great War. 120 for the the Escalation. Oh, for... I got you, for Team Yankee. For the Team Yankee, right. Yeah, sorry. So... Yeah, well, they're not hard. I mean, God, well, just get. Yeah, I just throw a couple more two, two uh, leopard twos two more in leopard there. Twos in yeah, there, I, I, but, I think it's. But I, th- I think I have to make them. All right. Um, the next thing is yeah. uh, is, Wolf, is Craig. Wolf Craig. Yeah. Tell, tell, tell so, us about that one. You wrapped up. With yeah, that. Wolf yeah. Craig is. Uh, that's a, that's our that's our alma mater. Yeah. You know, uh, it's it's run by Hard Knocks Games here in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, always has a great turnout. Always has a red versus blue uh, and format, historical yeah. theme mm-hmm. format. So this one's going to be D-Day, 100 points. Mm-hmm. So the D-Day U.S. and German books are usable. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm sure that for the, the British book may not be out in time. Uh, it might be. Mm-hmm. But uh, if it's not the British book, um, uh, y- you could certainly run the, uh, the normal the British. The Fortress Europe or yeah. the late war British. Yeah. The, the late war British yeah. uh, baseline force. Mm-hmm. So as long as it would be something that was uh, D-Day reasonable. Yeah. So it would be fine. That. Speaking of which, uh, I saw on Facebook today a... Uh, a brief snapshot of uh, uh, from War Games Illustrated of uh, the new upcoming British starter set. Oh yeah! And yeah. Uh, one thing that really jumped out was the uh, the the infantry platoon has uh, the command team, command MG teams, six MG teams, 
and uh, has the the two inch mortar and has the piots, but it has two piots, oh. which would be a major change in the British infantry formation because histor- you know continuously throughout Flames of War, Wait, the British platoons only, only had a single yeah. piot. Mm-hmm. Well, this and which has always been a chief complaint from British players. So, be interesting to see if that's the case that now the British in, li- in late war can now get an extra piot. That'd be kind of yeah. a cool thing. <laughs> so, uh, Wolf Craig, hey, oh, and the other big thing about Wolf Craig, we got a new building. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hard Knocks Games has a new location, huge amount of space. Huge. Massive, yeah, huge. huge. Ma- massive amount of terrain. Uh, we had one of our local players just recently donate several tubs of buildings. Yeah, amazing. So, uh, yeah, uh, Charles Christie, kudos to Charles for, yeah. for hooking up yeah, the community. Thank you, Charles. So, a great deal. But anyway, so Wolf Craig, uh, if you can't tell, Ed and I are very excited about that. And that's it, our home turf. So, come on down and, and beat us up. And that's 100 points, right, Tom? Yeah, that's 100 points. 100 points. Okay. So, then uh, we go to the end of the month with Adepticon. Adepticon. Con. Yep, and that's out in Chicago, Illinois. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's also a Nationals event, and on Saturday, the 27th of March, they're playing Midwar with 90 points, mm-hmm. and I think I'm going to go with my British. I think I'm going to bring out the Crusader Swarm again, mm-hmm. and then on the 28th, they'll be doing a Team Yankee, 120 Team points. Team Yankee, 120 yeah, I've, I have not yet. I've got to get my thing squared I have up. Not, I have enough stuff to play 120 points. Heck, I've got like... You know, 26 I know, you got it. Shoot. I mean, your but, house is getting overrun. I uh, know, it's terrible. So uh, we'll uh, we'll definitely hit that. So those uh, so between February and March, the next two months out, we got a lot of opportunity for oh, gaming. Oh, I got an idea. Do so, my West Germans with uh, an Allied support challengers? Yeah, there you go. Pick, borrow Charles's challengers. He won't. He, <laughs> <laughs> he'll let you. I want to buy them because they look so cool. Yeah. So that's. Uh, yeah, that's, it'd be yeah. fun fun to paint them. I like the, the paint scheme. But. Yeah. So that's what's going on for the next two months that we're aware of. Uh, if we didn't cover one of your events, uh, please let us know. And uh, that brings us to the next thing. Let us know. There you go. <laughs> uh, so if you want to get a hold of us and uh, give us some feedback or... If you just want to tell us about events that weren't covered, uh, that we, that, you know, we definitely want to try to cover everything that's happening. And we know we go off the Battlefront uh, Flames of War page mm-hmm. and the, the community forum there. That's mm-hmm. the only place we see events. And other than that, it's just things that we know about that are happening. Mm-hmm. And so we'll try to share that with everybody. But if you have an event that you'd like us to specifically mention, uh, please uh, send that to podcast at battlevault.com. Mm-hmm. That's podcast at battlevault.com. And I'll get that email and share with Ed and... We'll see what we need to do to tighten our shot group on this podcast and uh, okay. do a better job giving you information out there in the field. So without further ado, I do want to thank you. If you made it this far on the podcast, hopefully we haven't bored you too heavily. <laughs> and we uh, look forward to continuing to do this. We're going to try again uh, a monthly yeah, monthly iteration. Try to give you something to do and uh, something to listen to while you're mowing the lawn or painting your miniatures or or traveling on the road. That's what we do with That's our podcast. That's what we do with our podcast. And uh, we need more of them. <laughs> so, so we're going so to make our own and we'll listen to ourselves. Yeah, so we're going to add to the pile. <laughs> so again, uh, thank you. And we look forward to uh, chatting with you in the future. Thanks so much for joining the show tonight. Remember to follow us on Twitter at No Dice, No Glory. And keep the conversation going on NoDiceNoGlory.com, now featuring our own message boards. Have a great night, everybody.